Hi, I'm Gabrielle Logan, and this is my presentation on insects of medical importance. This is a brief overview of my presentation, and I will be discussing the background information on insects and human health, ethnoentomology, with focus on the positive and negative effects insects to health. But more specifically, I'll be looking at the positive effects of the order Calyptera, order Hymenoptera, order Lepidoptera, and order Diptera on human health and how they can be beneficial to human health. And then I'll be ending with my conclusion. So as we have discussed in class, insects are often seen as something that negatively affects human health. For example, many people are deathly allergic to the stings of bees, wasps, and ants, and they often require the administration of an EpiPen in order to stop them from going into anaphylactic shock. Insects can also be vectors for disease, carrying harmful and deadly bacteria with them, and then transmitting it to humans when they bite us. And some of these common diseases that are transmitted are uh, malaria, which is hugely dangerous to humans across the world, and especially in tropical third world countries, and then um, typhoid fever. But what I want to discuss is, is it all bad? Do in insects mostly negatively affect humans? Historically, there is record of insects being used in traditional medicine. These traditional sources are from traditional Chinese medicine, Indian or Ayurvedan medicine, Aboriginal medicine of North and South America, as well as traditional African medicine. This is due to insects that have certain pharmacological agents that help with certain disorders and uh, sicknesses, as well as insects that can be useful as medical tools. This photo is from a research article that sums up various ways insects can benefit human health. And for the purposes of this presentation, I will be focusing on flies, ants, beetles, as well as moths, which are not shown here. Order Coleoptera has two species of blister beetles that have been found to contain a naturally occurring chemical that helps fight cancer. This chemical is the cantharidin, and it has been extracted from these beetles and is currently researched um, for its ability to cause apoptosis, autophagy, and necrosis in cancerous tissue. And uh, this research has only been done in murine tumors, but it is thought that there will be human applications for this chemical. And this chemical is found in the Epicotta hirudicornis, which is pictured here, as well as the Mylobris chicori. So now moving on to order Hymenoptera. Uh, the Hymenoptera has various species that are medically useful, and I have this video depicting um, the use of ants as sutures. And this video is Apocalypto, directed by Mel Gibson, and uh, it is about Mayans and their traditions. And Mayans are one of the more commonly known cultures that used ants as sutures, where they um, used the ants instead of needles and thread. And the ants are picked up by their bodies so that their head and mandibles are free. The mandibles are then put into contact with the lesion in order to cl tightly close the wound. And then the head is removed from the thorax and abdomen, usually by pinching or twisting off the ant at the thorax. And this is thought to help um, keep the wound closed and it is also thought that the ant mandibles uh, contain antibacterial chemicals in order to promote the wound's healing. Another hymenoptera that is very common 
with um, traditional medicine is the polyrhynchus vicinia, and it is used in traditional Chinese medicine where the ant is dried and crushed into a powder then mixed with water. Um, this concoction is thought to help relieve uh, chronic disease as well as prevent hair loss from chemotherapy, also help with sexual dysfunction, insomnia, and um, nervous breakdowns, and a bunch of other uh, illnesses and disorders. Other ants are also use have been thought to be useful in traditional treatment of arthritis, joint pain, hepatitis B, as well as a bunch of other um, ailments. And often these ants are eaten or allowed to bite the patient. The Lipidoptera species that I want to focus on right now is the Detropha leaf miner, also known as the Stumfastis thrustica, and it is used in traditional Indian medicine, where the larva is collected and dried, then crushed. And this is usually all done at moonlight, and then mixed with water to drink. And it is not known to have any real um, pharmacological agents to help, but it has been used in order to relieve fever and in order to increase um, a mother's lactation for her newborn. But there's no current scientific evidence for this. Silkworms are also being researched for their potential biomedical applications of their silk and of their pupa. The American Epu Epacaridaria calera is um, being researched for the use of its silk in in vitro growth of cells using the silk as a scaffold so that the cells can grow on it. Uh, it also may be useful for internal surgery. The more common Bombyx mori has a variety of medical applications as well. First, the pupa has been traditionally boiled and then eaten to treat ailments such as bronchitis, pneumonia, and apoplexy. Its silk is also being researched for internal and external surgery, but the, the larvae has to eat a certain diet in order to help with some of this research, and the diet has to contain certain healing agents or antibiotics, and this is thought to help speed recovery of um, patients in surgery. The final order I will be discussing is Diptera with the species green bottle blowfly or the Lucilia cerica, also known as the Phaeansia cerratica. And this fly has been used in a very old and common method of treating necrotic wounds with historic research showing that the Aboriginal tribes of Australia Myanmar and Central America used maggots to clean wounds. It was also a very popular treatment during World War II when soldiers used maggots to clean their gangrenous tissue. And um, it did become less popular upon the discovery of antibiotics, but since variety of bacteria are becoming resistant to antibiotics, um, modern medicine has seen the rediscovery of this treatment where these maggots are raised in a sterile environment and then put on gangrenous tissue. These maggots are also thought to secrete um, micro antimicrobial agents. Or This wonderful photo shows the uh, different stages in treatment of a patient who had necrotic tissue due to the Berger's disease and this maggot treatment is also very popular for necrotic tissues caused by osteomyelitis 
diabetes, as well as also Berger's disease and others. In conclusion, insects are often viewed in a negative light as they are thought to actually decrease or cause poor health. But as I have discussed, there are many practical applications for these insects that actually could help improve wellness. For example, there was the cancer-fighting ability of the beetles, the antibacterial wound cleaning with potential regrowth abilities from the maggots and flies. There were also pre-modern sutures with possible antibacterial activity from the ants. And there's also surgical applications from the moths, with all of these orders showing insects that have possibility for relief of a variety of other illnesses. Thank you for listening to my presentation. Here are my references.